Hello, this is the brown car guy. This is Shazad Sheikh. And uh, I'm waiting to go online with some friends of mine who's joining. Uh, hello there, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> so just waiting for some people to join. Yo! And uh, what's this? Waiting, waiting. So we're actually trying something a little bit different today. Um, I'm hoping to go live with Planet Auto, which have just sent me a request. I've just accepted, and something. She, hello. I, I think it worked. Ah, okay. Hang on. You know what? And um, I cannot hear you. Say something. Hello. Oh, I can hear. Good, I can hear you as well. So it's worked, brilliant. It's kind of yeah, yeah, that's good. It is, yeah. Slight delay, but we'll get round. Yeah, yeah, it... yeah, yeah. So I uh, hope we got join other to Tim, Yo, and Naughty Sofiana. So yeah, a few people joining us now. So uh, yeah, so this is Brown Car going live with Planet Auto. Um, it is indeed. V8 Zach. <laughs> Technology, huh? Isn't it extraordinary? So it is. Uh, yeah, it's amazing what you can do then. with tech nowadays. <clears throat> That's extraordinary. Hello it to is. I am Sandy, Shaban. Hello to Nizar Mansari, ninety-two. People joining us. Good to see you guys. Happy Friday to all of you. So, so, um, so the idea today was to sort of catch up with what we've been up to. I was going to so, say, you've, ben, you has, go you've had a really busy you, week. You've been, you, I, I, I'm really jealous. I'm really, really, really jealous because <laughs> you guys were at what looked to be an absolutely epic, epic Goodwood Festival of Speed. It was absolutely immense. Everything there was, well, it was cutting edge. You can tell that they're really pushing EVs now. I mean, really pushing them. The things like the Citroen 1919, also the Volkswagen ID stuff as well, like the Buzz and the um, Vision. Did you see those? I did. I did. I was, I was very impressed with the uh, IDR and the yeah. fact that it took the uh, the record up the hill. That's quite incredible. I know. So just uh, yeah, so, it's so, it's so, taken so some time to beat the McLaren. Uh, it, it was. Oh, you know. I mean, to to watch it in action. I mean. I have to confess, I'm not a great fan of electric cars, let's be honest. <laughs> no, no, but you'll probably like the headline um, this morning in the news then. What's, what's, what was the headline? I didn't see it. Even if we put all these EVs into London, we're still going to have pollution because the brake disc dust. Interesting. Yeah, considering mountain yeah, bikes have uh, brake discs. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. No, I, me I mean, there's, there's many other reasons for pollution. Yeah, there's the fact that we're just transferring the source of power, you know, from uh, from cities to power stations. The fact that we are mining for batteries. The fact yeah. that we have a recycling issue. But aside from all of that, we now have a brake dust issue. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those. It's it's gonna. It's like you say, hydrogen cars are going to be coming along at some point in a bigger way, aren't they? Yeah, they can't come along soon enough. Quite, I think that might be the way forward. But anyway, back to the back to um, Goodwood and back to. I mean, did you see this thing in action? Were you, did you witness this? I'm trying to think if I actually saw that car. I saw a lot of cars, but it, it's literally. I mean, you went back in the day, didn't you? I did, to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. It's been a few years since I've been there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I've been, I've been well, to several of them in the past, but I also probably. I think it might have been the third or fourth ever edition I attended, and it was a very, very different event back then. It was, no, uh, I can imagine. Uh, I mean, it, it was much more intimate. Mm. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I get that, actually, because the thing is, we were at the McLaren launch, and because of all the red flags on the track, they held up the launch by 20 minutes. So I was filming yes, this I, Yes, I know. I know, <laughs> I know, because I was following you for a while, yeah. and then I just gave up. <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing is. anything. And, then, and I then I was watching the live stream. Yeah, exactly. But That's yeah. what I did. I mean, you should have seen it. When the guy came on stage, he literally went, and this is the, the sod it. Let's just uncover it. And, you know, because he knew he was going to lose his audience because he had to do it so quickly. Yeah. 
which is a shame. Yeah, absolutely. But it shows so you that just, uh, track are, is literally are, car are, after car uh, after car. Live. It was an incredible event. So we are live on Instagram. Uh, Brown Car Guys is that shake in association with Planet Auto uh, today, trying out something new, Instagram Live. We are here together and just do a few hellos and a few shout outs if people are joining us. Hi to Shijin. Hi to Umer. How are you doing, brother? You're doing well, I hope. Hi to I am Sakib and hi to I. Sakib and hi to I. You are a popular and hi to guy, Jason aren't you? <laughs> There's a few people joining us. So thanks everybody for joining us. We're doing a catch up of what we've been up to. Uh, Planet Auto was lucky enough to spend a few days at Goodwood. So what was what was your highlight there at Goodwood? I mean, I was watching the whole thing online and I, I was transfixed to my, uh, my iPad. I was trying to do some work and I just kept getting distracted. It was incredible. Yeah, exactly. Everything there was a head turner. I mean, I was walking down the middle of the stands and then all of a sudden the uh, new Aston Martin Rapid E went past and the DBX, which I just unbelievable. didn't expect. Literally, I turned around and I couldn't hear him and then all of a sudden I saw them. You know, I want to ask what's... you about, uh, just before that, i just say, um, I am Saqib is asking, are you missing Dubai? There are certainly aspects of Dubai that I'm missing, but right now I hear it's over 50 degrees centigrade, so I'm not missing that because the temperature here in London is actually really, really good today. So, hope you're having a blessed Friday, I am Saqib, and yes, missing Dubai. Hope to be back there maybe later in the year. Hello to Daiju uh, underscore Rotary Lover. Uh, I guess you're a Wankel lover. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm say a lover there, definitely an RX-7 lover. <laughs> lot, of, lot of love for those cars, that's for sure. Oh, now, yeah. I want to ask you, Ben, did you get to see that Di Tommaso? Yes. I got to witness the that? launch, and Lord March was stood right in front of me before he was called on stage to talk to the designers. Is he, is he still Lord March? Yeah. Because I thought, I thought he's transferred the title or something now, hasn't he? Ah, right. Okay. Isn't he now well, the Duke? It was, he's the Duke of Richmond now, isn't he's he? He's definitely Duke of Richmond, but I've seen Lord March written in other places as well. But yeah, that would make sense. Right. Because I did notice when they were doing all the advertising this year, they kept calling him the Duke of Richmond rather than Lord March. Whereas last year, it was all Lord March. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that car so you know, is so you phenomenal. Know the the V2 Marshall? Yeah, the P72. Do the... Do the you, so, so do the proportions look right? Because I swear, you know, I mean, it was an I saw incredible you talk about uh, this, looking yeah. car. I think, but, we it, did. but it looks a I little saw bit cartoony. Track as well, in front of me, maybe it was a wide-angle lens that you were, you know, dependent because uh -huh. the television cameras, aren't they? And they sometimes do obscure yeah. it. What you need to do is see it in person, see what you think. Yeah. Because I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love it. I, it wasn't anything like I expected because, I mean, De Tomaso haven't launched for, what, 1995, something like that? Yeah, yeah, I've been dormant for a long, long time. Exactly. That's what I mean. I, I mean, the last car I remember was the Pantera. And then there was a uh, Mangusto as well, I think. And, but um, but this is a completely others, new but... company. Yes, exactly. Well, you can tell. Um, it's got in my opinion, modern supercar looks, but with a real retro 1960s style. Right, right. It's got a great interior on it. I'm yeah. just hoping that it's got a, a Shelby GT500 V8 in it, because that would be, uh, in terms of the heritage, that would be fitting. And also, let's put 760 horsepower in there. That's what it needs. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, as I was looking through the back, all I could see was a gold engine. I couldn't tell anything more than that. I could just see glimmers right. of gold. So could be anything. What did honestly. it sound like? Um, did it sound like a V8? I, I, it's an interesting one because when it went past me, it was really, really slow because it was in a convoy of other cars. Ah. I think that went past right, right. things like the Alfa Romeo Tonale, you know, because obviously they were just taking out the, the newest cars there and they were all just crawling yeah. down the track because... Um, yeah. Obviously, that was going to be one of the highlights for day um, on Thursday. So, yeah, I don't actually know what powers it. I'm going to find out. Well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't reveal it, would they? So no. um, that's the thing. Yeah. So I am Sakib says, see you at the Dubai International Motor Show. Yes, I hope so. Uh, I'm actually, uh, hopefully there are some plans falling into place. 
and I may well be there for that motor show. So it'd be great to catch up with a lot of people during that time. I believe it is 12th to 15th November this year. Hello to, it's me, Samir Shah, and hello to Blue Devil 638. Hope you guys are having a great time. So we're here live on Instagram today, and I'm joined by my good buddies over at Planet Auto, and we're just sort of comparing our week and see what we've been up to and what we've been getting on with. And I was just expressing my extreme envy and jealousy at the fact that I, uh, I foolishly didn't go to Goodwood Festival of Speed, and they did, and it looked absolutely epic. So it what was. would you say were your favorite uh, bits? of the Goodwood Festival? There's so many highlights. That's the thing about it. Everywhere you walk, because the thing about Goodwood is it's, it's like an organic being. You walk around, you have to be careful because you might get run over by an Audi S1 that's heading towards the paddock. <laughs> You know, all of a sudden, you'll just hear a car just revving. Wouldn't, like wouldn't be hell. a bad way to go, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't oh, be a exactly. bad way to go out, though, would it? That's what I mean, a group B. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you'd go down in infamy, wouldn't you? You really would. Um, but, yeah, there was also um, Mike something or other, a drift guy in a Lamborghini, and he was in the paddock. He saw Mad all, Mike. He, yeah. He saw Mad all Mike. the media yeah, watching awesome. him, and he started performing, and he was just like this out the window. It, I think it was a hurricane. Yeah. I can't actually yeah. remember. I've got shots of it. There was also a jet yeah, bike as well. Yeah, yeah. So this did jet you, bike did you, did you started do a up and then just sprayed smoke. Yeah, yeah. Did did you do a backflip then? So, Mad yeah, Mike. You have. Mike. No, he, he um, didn't do a backflip. That's his signature oh. move. Oh, you mean the guy? You mean the guy in the jet pack, don't you? No, no. I mean Mad Mike. That's oh, his signature well, no, move. He, he doesn't. Doing that yeah. There. I saw him was drifting the Lambo, but in the arena, he was supposed to be doing some really interesting things. But as you know, we couldn't really film the arena because the rights are through Goodwood. Uh, your sound has now gone, and I have no clue why. I can't hear you. Hmm. Uh... Send. Bloody thing. Hello, can you hear me? Is anyone there? So this is an experiment we're trying today. We're going live. I'm going live on Instagram. Instagram live. Uh, with my friends, well, with Planet Auto, who have joined, and uh, hopefully they, they will uh, come on live. No sound, no sound. Uh, hello to I am Sakib. I am Sakib. Can you tell me? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just uh, give me a thumbs up or something. If you can hear me, uh, a z z z z z z. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up, because I'm not sure if people. Uh, on now. Okay, Planet Auto says they're on now. I can. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, then join. Let's join. Let's try this again. Part two of our... Uh, yes, you can hear me. Good. It's happening. Absolutely. You can hear me. Go live. Let's do this. Technology. <laughs> so we are basically trying something new. Uh, there was a problem when you were both live together. Okay, we're going to go try it in live together again. Oh, here's Ben. I can see him now. There we go. Yeah, it seems to be working. Um, it's actually giving me a warning that there was a problem. So. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the, this is, once again, the people joining us, Blue Devil, and a lot of the guys that were here before have rejoined. Nice to see you guys. Welcome Thanks, all. Thanks for yeah. persevering. Um, so we are going live on Instagram Live. Uh, Shazad Sheikh, now Brown Car Guy. Find me on browncarguy.com. And also hashtag Brown Car Guy, joined by Ben from Planet Auto, and check them out on there. Uh, ben, you introduce yourself. Go for it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Planet Auto. Uh, we've just gone live on Roku as well, and you will see 
brown car guy featured on Roku as well. I mean, that's Woo-hoo! amazing for us. We're on YouTube as well and the other social media, TikTok and such. Everything, yeah. You've got to be everywhere, right? That's the thing. You do. You have to be everywhere to be seen because not everybody follows every social media account, as we all know. No, no, absolutely, yeah. There are different people in different places. Those of us watching uh, Blue Devil, uh, Tia, Tia Gomatias, <laughs> hello to you. Thanks for joining us. So as mentioned, Welcome we all. are trying to live today with Planet Auto and Brown Car Guy. And we're just going through some of the stuff that we went up to and what's been going on. So you've been reviewing some cars as well, Ben. How's that been going? What, what did you it's have? It's been you going a, very well. You pickup truck, didn't you? Well, yeah, we had a Nissan Navara that we took down to Goodwood. Um, it was a press car. It had done 9,000 miles. And when we returned, it had done about 10,500. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did some fair miles in it. Yeah, I bet they're both going to be there. Well, you know, it's a commercial one, vehicle. It's supposed like to do that sort of mileage seat. anyway. Pardon? It's supposed to do that sort of mile anyway. It's a, well, it's a commercial vehicle. That's it. And they've got a five-year warranty now. They're pretty cool, yeah. aren't they? 2.3 litre, seven-speed auto. So Nissan, Nissan Navara, what's, what's that based on then? That, as far that, as I know, it's a Mercedes engine and gearbox. And oh, right. um, chassis-wise... Ladder chassis, so they're all very similar, Hilux and Navara and mm-hmm. so on. Um, but no, uh, very good workhorses, because we've had three pickups now. L200 by Mitsubishi, the um, Isuzu D-Max, and now this. And then next week, or the week after, or the week after, it all kind of blends now, the X-Class. So the actual Mercedes one. So we'll see the engine in the oh, Mercedes okay. oh, rather than in Nissan. You are, so, you yeah. are becoming the guys for the, for, the, uh, for the pickups, aren't you? So I, yeah, Azo, thanks for that. Azo confirms that it's a Mercedes chassis. Interesting that. So this is, yeah. uh, this is a joint venture between Mercedes and Nissan. But I'm not really up on my pickups, it looks like. Although, now, having said that, I did get a really, really good and close look at, sadly not a drive of, but a very intimate hands-on experience otherwise with the Jeep Gladiator. So I have seen cool. your stuff and I am, what a week you've had with those, my word, flying to Italy and then going off and obscure journeys in these Jeeps. I was like, <laughs> and there's he thinking, ooh, I've missed Goodwood. Well, we've missed Jeep. Yeah, you miss, you miss Camp Jeep. Um, yeah. from this year, actually, this is my second year at Camp Jeep because last year I also was at Camp Jeep and I was there for the launch of the brand new Wrangler, the Wrangler JL. And uh, we had a fantastic couple of days driving those up and down in Austria, actually, in the hills of Austria, um, with the soundtrack to get the sound of music playing in my ear for some reason. Sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> and, mad. Yeah, the uh, perfect so terrain is, for something yeah. like that. At Goodwood, the new Rubicon was there as well. The Rubicon is absolutely legendary. I tell you what, you know, if today, these days, if you actually want a proper hardcore vehicle, honestly, I yep. can't think of a better vehicle than a, yep. a Wrangler Rubicon. So well, I like that. I also like the Jimny as well. I think the Jimny's a bloody good vehicle. Yeah, I want to get my hands. It is a fantastic looking little thing. Uh, yeah. My former, uh, my, 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 my colleague, Imtishan Giado, Motoring Middle East, where I was before, he's recently tested the Suzuki uh, Jimny uh, over, over there. And he, and he was telling me that over there, because the speeds are much higher in the Middle East, in the UAE, in Dubai, that it struggled a little bit. So on motorways, it wasn't a great car. But yeah, he had a lot of fun taking it out into the desert, though. He said it was really it was really. Yeah, hard. we noticed that. Very, very good off-road. We basically got a brand new one. It had done 2,000 miles, and we took it through grisdale forest in the lake district on green lanes and it coped very well but the people looking at us on mountain bikes were like i've never even seen that what is it it's, like, it's a brand new jimny and you've got it in a forest on these green lanes yes on road tires yes is it performing well well we've got here we've got to get to the end and they're like, yeah. amazing <laughs> But yeah, on the road, I, I know exactly what he means. When you get up to about 65, 70, that's it. Because, yeah, it's you a, know, it, it's no, built it's for not really meant it's like for that, chassis. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not really meant but for no, that. You should yeah, really I mean, anybody watching, really we're should. live here. Yeah, we're live here with Planet Auto. We're trying out live. So Shazad Sheikh, Brown Car Guy, in association with Ben Hello all. from Planet Auto. And do check out their YouTube channel because, as he's just been saying, they've been trying out the Suzuki Jimny. They're one, amongst the first people here. And they're, they're lucky enough to live in beautiful parts of England. So they're up there. Uh, they're, they're, where, where are you located exactly? 
Um, just outside Kendall. I'll just answer this question to I am Saqib. Yes, there yeah. is there's supposed to be a substantial waiting list for the new Jimny. I mean, I was driving down the M25 last week down to Goodwood, and um, all of a sudden it said heavy traffic, and I thought, okay, makes sense. It's London. It's Thursday. Uh, I mean, Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. And then we went along, and there's uh, Shmi parked on the side of the road with his G wagon, a Jimny, and a Senna. So that this is, is Shmi cause... 150. How, how was how was Shmi that was the cause driving of the three traffic. cars at the same time? I don't, I don't. I he had a crew with him. He must All have right. done. But it was. I, I've never seen anything quite like it. But yeah, the people who have Jimnys are basically. I think TG London got, got one with Archie Hamilton, and there was loads of them. They're they're really really popular. But the thing about them is, it's not. It actually has functionality off road, which is amazing. No, no, it is an incredible car. So Aizu has just said the body and frame SUVs are sadly disappearing. All we see today is pseudo SUVs, which are compact cars jacked up. Sad. You know, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, a lot of these. Well, yeah, we're seeing a lot of active crossovers. The SUVs, aren't we? even the modern That's ones, it. can do incredible things. I mean, I was. Uh, I... Sorry? Say again? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that, aren't we? I mean, things like Fords now have decided to, instead of releasing SUVs, they do the active range. So it's like an estate or a small car that has like SUV yeah. characteristics, but it's still a car. Quite a clever move. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not even bothering anymore. A lot of manufacturers just call them crossovers now. They're not even trying anymore. Uh, hello yeah. to AJC38. Uh, I am Sandy Shaban says, will Jimny launch in India anytime soon? I'm not sure. I mean, theoretically, I'm not. you would think so. Under the Maruti brand, you would expect it to launch there. But I think that, as Ben is saying, on this so high, and yeah. even in the Middle East, there's a big waiting list for these cars. I think they're just playing catch up. I don't think Suzuki was geared up for the sort of volume of demand. They were, for not at all. I mean, the head guy, when he came to, um, when he picked up the Vitara, the main guy from the press office turned up. And he was actually, if you've seen, have you seen the Matt Watson video when um, there's three Jimneys tied to a G? Have you seen I that? Think, yeah, I think I might have seen that. Yeah, that's a bit bonkers. Well, he was, um, his claim to fame was that was his tow rope, which was quite amusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he said wow. that I'm really glad you took it off road with the road tires because we need to demonstrate how good this thing is. They love yeah. it, which is nice. It's incredible. Plus, I mean, have you seen, you can get all these body kits now that make it look like a Defender or you oh, can make and, it look and, like uh, a AMG, G. AMG G Wagon. Yeah. This yeah. is a very popular, uh, very popular modification in the Middle East right now. Is to turn little Jimneys into uh, mini G wagons. And yeah, so that's G wagons what I mean. are the they're awesome. Have. Yeah, they're yeah. really, really cool. Hello to uh, Jack Ketteridge. Hello to Rehan R. Kamar. Hello to Salman Seven Four Eight. I am Sandy. Says earlier, Maruti Gypsy was there. But that's, that's an interesting one. Come. Yeah, and then uh, as it says, what are your thoughts about the EQC? Do you think it's well? I saw the, that last week. Okay, go for it. Then you answer that one. Right. Okay. Um, I like it. Um, I mean, okay, yeah, it's an SUV, but it, it appears to have a decent range. I mean, they've not released much on it. It looks rather cool, and it shows that Mercedes are taking it seriously, moving towards EVs and hybrid technology and so on. Um, well, inside, all, all it's got the, the refinement of, take... you know, of a Merc basically. Well, all the manufacturers now are getting serious and they're all introducing electric cars. Mini have just launched their mini hatchback. Electric, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Car as well. And a lot of people, the Jaguar, of course, with that terrific eye pace, which is just winning awards left, right and center. The problem yes. with the EQC, I didn't think it was a very good looking car. It basically looks like a Mercedes SUVs, doesn't it? But it's slightly more styled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, because that's it. Is one way of putting ones. it. You see, I yeah, think well, the problem yeah. I have, the problem that <laughs> I have with EVs is that, you know, because the engine and, and because the traditional architecture of a car is not required because the batteries yeah. are under the floor and the motors are at the axles, so you don't need a big bonnet and an engine space, that yeah. really, I feel designers should be pushing, pushing that out a lot more because there's a lot more scope for them to try things. So I don't see why. I mean, you remember when BMW first showed the concept for the i8 um, yes. and actually had a glass front to it. 
Yeah. Do you remember that was the idea? Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't need to have an engine or you didn't need to have anything at the front. So I, I don't understand why manufacturers aren't pushing that a little bit more and saying, you know what, we can experiment a little bit more with design here. I know they need crumple zones, but there must be a way of doing this, you know? Um, so yeah. it, 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 it is interesting to see uh, that. So hello to uh, Willie. Lead, how you doing? We'll need to hear from you. Hello to Dr. Phil, 23. I wonder if that is the Dr. Phil. Look at that. I know, so, my word. <laughs> we're on it. So, so going back to the Gladiator, because uh, one of the guys early on here talked about the fact that it's a uh, body on frame cars versus Cool. I think you're still, we're still, I think I just got interrupted there. Yeah, we're well, back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we're talking about um, body on frame cars. And yes, because even the new Defender now is going to be a monocoque uh, chassis. It's not a body on frame car. But one of the cars that still is, like you said, the Jeep, uh, the, sorry, the Suzuki uh, Jimny, but also the Jeep Wrangler and of course the Jeep Gladiator. And one of the things that I found quite interesting about the Gladiator was that it feels to me like a car yes initially it's going to be a big product and that's where they're going to sell and that's what they're pitching at with lots of mopar accessories it's got a portable uh, bluetooth speak under the back seat which you can just take out you know that's crazy it is the uh, master and, 3 and is doing it. well in so the is that, that, really, that is that is crazy and did somebody ask that question ah i am psycho how's the mazda 3 doing in the uk yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay have you had, have you tried that have you tried that? No, um, I've driven every. Th no, I've driven everything but that. I drove the CX-5 and the um, the little one and uh, the MX-5 with the. Um, I can't remember what engine it is. It was um, a Master Drive Day back in Harrogate at right. the beginning of the year. Right. Um, yeah, getting hold of a press car for Mazdas uh, can be quite challenging. So they do the, all the drive days, which is really good. Right. So you get to experience them. Uh, no, no I really, would, I really would like to have a go in the Mazdas, especially the MX-5. And I think Mazda are producing some beautiful cars. Uh, Azo is waiting for the all-new Land Cruiser. I think you're going to have a very long wait. It's not coming any. Um, I don't know how long Toyota are going to continue to, to um, create the uh, the Land Cruiser. It's, let's be honest, it's it's it's, it's prehistoric. I mean, it's magnificent. Yes, but it works. <laughs> Magnificent, but it is prehistoric. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, it does exactly what you need it. But even in the Middle East, people are finding it that it's now become a bit expensive uh, and a bit more like just, you know, for actual off-roading stuff, which is why I see a lot of people uh, have moved to uh, Jeep uh, Jeep Wranglers. And, and trucks, trucks yeah. have really taken off in the Middle East. People are buying uh, for off-roading, uh, particularly F-150s and, and Rams. Um, used to be Toyota Tundras, not so much now, but certainly... Uh, Rams and F-150s are very popular. So just picking up, and I think the Gladiator will be very popular, just picking up on what I was trying to just finish my thought on that. Hello to Smart Mossy Success. That's an interesting name. Uh, just to pick up on, uh, just to finish my thoughts on that, uh, an incredible vehicle, got all the capability, luxury and refinement of a Wrangler, uh, but also all the off-road capability. It's got an extended wheelbase, obviously, and a bed at the back. Now, what occurred to me that being a body on uh, frame uh, construction, it could very easily be reconfigured for all kinds of other things. So whereas in the past, you used to see uh, defenders um, being reconfigured for military work or rescue work or corporate work for the oil companies and stuff like that. I I think that there's going to be an opportunity for Jeep to capitalize on uh, basically a market that perhaps the Defender is going to be leaving behind. It would be nice to see FCA do that, wouldn't it? Because, as you mentioned, it's so versatile. It's good off-road. It's got a level of luxury as well. And they're very dependable. You know, they have been since, what was it, 1943 or whatever it is. 41. In fact, they have a, in fact, one of the one of the cars they launched at the event was a nineteen. It was called the nineteen forty one edition. 
of the oh, Wrangler. So you amazing. can take it. There's a big 1941 uh, inscription on the bonnet, and it gets loads of Mopar bits. It's very, very cool. The thing I love about FCA products is they really emphasize the cool factor. I mean, they go for it. They just go, yeah. is this cool? Yes, it is. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, they do. You know, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. Hello it's to like you, 47 Dyer. It shows the Stelvio going flat out over a hill in midair. You know, the quadrifolios. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they know how to exactly. market. But it's the same with the, you know, the Abarth stuff as well. I mean, it's sad that if you've noticed, they've yeah. stopped selling the Fiat 124 Abarth and that kind of thing in this country now. They've stopped? Really? Yeah, they're not oh, on the website anymore. All oh, right. Why are they I honestly... I'm um, sad because I like yeah, that. I really I'm, like I'm the 124. I'm sad to do that because I was going really to drive do. one. <laughs> I know. Wow. I, I, yeah. So, so it's not on sale here at all, the Fiat Roadster? No. It's just not on well, the website? Was, one of them was removed off the website, and then uh, somebody else told me that the rest had been removed, and there's only, I think it's only the 500 baths on there, possibly now, and the 595s oh, and the 695s and the, you know, Rivales oh. and whatever. Interesting. Uh, but no, I'm out. gutted. I love that car. I, I love the yeah. standard 124. And I also love the a bath that we had with the um, the GT carbon fiber roof. Amazing car. You know, it stopped traffic. It was yeah, they, No, they do do some incredible products. And, and um, you know, long made yeah. end. But I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of cool cars coming through. So just let's go back to um, Goodwood. What else? What else really caught your eye there at Goodwood? Now I'm going Hello through. To Turbo Foot. Uh, I'm sorry, Fiat Spider is built on M Yeah, yeah, it is. It is basically, it's shared with the MX-5. Yeah. And uh, they exactly. have different engines, though. Yeah, they have different engines, but yeah, the chassis, do. I believe. One has a engine. Fiat, one has the Mazda. Is it something Dreams or something like that? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Right. It, it was non-stop. I mean, you probably saw how many lives I ended up doing. Every time I walked yeah. around a corner, there was a new car to review. You know, yeah. I saw the Defender, and then... I mean, I had this list of when there were launches, and I had to get from place to place to place to place. And uh, it was a completely so new paint, format this year picture, as well. So, so paint a picture for us. Just how big it is. So if you're going to, rushing from launch to launch to launch, like how, how much ground are you covering? seems like it would be a massive area. It's, it's absolutely staggering the size. And luckily, on the Thursday at least, there's not that many people there because it, they class it as day one. So obviously most people are working, but you are, I mean, I think I covered seven miles up and down just doing launches and lives, you know, quite easily, but I didn't walk wow. the full length or the full breadth of it at all. It's just, it is, it's immense. Plus you've got the track that goes through the middle of it. So you either have to use the bridge or you have to wait for right. the cars to stop moving and yeah. then wander across the track. Yeah, yeah, I saw so, that. Yeah, the, yeah, you have to wait for the intervals, and then you get you quickly yeah. run across to the other side. And then if you go, oh damn, actually I wanted to be on that side. Like, well, that's it now. You're on this side now, so that's it. Well, yeah. exactly, yeah. Because we had that experience last year with Annabelle because she was on a mobility scooter. We had to sit at the track side, but it worked out very well because right in front of us, all the cars came up. And if you remember. Um, I think it was last year and maybe this year as well. Cars had come up to the center and then just do a load of donuts in the middle, smoke bellowing off the tires and then zoom off. So that, you know, it, it was right no. in front of me. So I could watch it and experience it, which was nice. Um, I'm trying to think of the other highlights. I mean... mean meanwhile, we've got a bit of a conversation going on between Azo and I am Sake. I, Azo is like, like, I hate Turbo 4s. And it's got to be sixes and V8s all the way. And I'm sorry, we are going to die soon, unfortunately. I feel you guys. Oh, dear. You know, this I, is an economy I talking, type. And then, yeah, I was going to say. It's, it, it, hello to yeah, Hanky well, as well. It's, it's, uh, let me just say, because I was just going to say, because I remember having this conversation recently with somebody. Because recently, I've been posting some of my old stuff. And I recently posted, and you'll find it on my IGTV, actually. I posted a review that I did on a Dodge Challenger SRT about nine years ago, um, for Middle East edition of Car Magazine. And in that video, I conclude by saying, you know, make the most of it because these cars are going to die soon. 
And that was like nine years ago. And now we've got Hellcats, we've got Demons, <laughs> we've got GT4. Yeah. Things. Track. Hawks and. Oops. I can't hear you. So here I am again, trying this unique uh, new thing that we're trying today, Instagram Live, teaming up between myself, Shazad Sheikh, Brown Car Guy, and hopefully Planet Auto. Hello to Blue Devil, 638, Aizu, you've joined us again, I'm Sakib has joined, Planet Auto has joined, hopefully we're back again. So I'm just waiting for Ben to come on, here we go, and go live. You done it. Mohaim Mahamuni Mahamuni and um, what's happening? Connecting. Ah, there you are. I am. It's working <laughs> quite well considering. I mean, it's the first time we've run this, and I think three disconnects in what is it, half an hour? Yeah. Is not particularly bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. So I think we've got a three partner no. on our hands now, which is a bit epic, isn't it? So it's not too bad at all. Yeah, as long as you've got it, I'm not even getting the option to save it. So hopefully you are. Uh, well, it's funny you should say that because I haven't got it either. So I think we might have to find some other hack. Um, we're hoping, so for those of us joining us, we're hoping to be <laughs> okay. able to repost oh, well. this. Yeah. We're hoping to be able to yeah. repost this on our channels and also as a podcast. Uh, that is dependent on if we're able to strip the, uh, the audio off this, uh, this live that we're doing. So we'll try and yeah. figure out a thing. I think between us, we'll try and figure out a way of doing this. Um, otherwise, we'll come up with another way of recording the audio at the same time that we're doing this as well. But it's good yes. fun. We're having a lot of people joining us. Uh, hello to Master Face. How are you doing? And uh, a lot of the people have rejoined. Thanks for so much. So once again, to Thank you. Shabbat Jake, a brown car guy in association with Ben from Planet Auto. And uh, we hope to do this, what, let's say once a week, we hope to do this sort of catch up and uh, just yeah, do a round good, up of what's been going on. Yeah. yeah, well, next so, week I've just, got just a looking... non-stop week again. So I don't know about you. Are you busy next yeah. week? I, um, I haven't got too much lined up. I've got a lot of content that I actually have to put out. I've got a bit of work to do <laughs> Yeah, tell me about it. I've got stuff from Goodwood still. That was it. I did a lot of lives yeah. just to try and mitigate some of that. But I've still got quite a yeah. bit on the digital SLR of the paddock that you couldn't have gone live yeah. because nobody would have heard a word. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I, yeah, I followed you. Some, I've tried to follow some, some of you. But I have to say that what the problem with Goodwood is that Goodwood themselves to do such a terrific live stream that they're basically killing anybody else's yep. opportunity to live from there. You just watch the Goodwood live stream because it's all done. Um, hello to hello to that 2019er. Hello to Shabbat to refine reliability. Uh, you can't beat the uh, Toyotas. Um, that's good. Yeah, no, you're right. You didn't sit in the back of one of my all-time favorite canal, which is the Lotus at least, so no disagreement there. <laughs> so I don't know what Lotus is going to do going forward now, of course, but now that it's owned by Geely, Geely, whatever you want to call it, I think you might find the Volvo engines. I wouldn't be surprised. Recently it's quite ironic that you mentioned Lotus because we've just reached out today to get some Lotus press cars and attend some of the driving days. So we'll keep you posted on that, and maybe you can... You and I can go and floor in a lease round a race circuit. 
Oh, absolutely. We'd love to do that. Yeah, I'm looking forward also to seeing this new car that they're coming out with, the Type 130 or the uh, Avia. Avia? Avia, yeah. they're calling it. And mm. uh, which is very interesting because it's, it's, of course, Lotus tradition of naming their cars after the letter E. After numbers. Um, but the, yeah. Uh, and, and, and numbers is the code and then the actual names are all, all is stuck with the letter E. And then the Avia, actually, the way that they've done the script is quite funny because if you look at it backwards, it looks like alive, which I thought was very clever, actually. Oh, nice. The only thing about the car is going to be a hypercar. Very expensive hypercar, though, isn't it? Which I don't know if it's Lotus. No, it's not. It's sports cars. That's, that's a bold move for something that's always been seen as a sports car. I mean, yeah, granted, they've had some pretty crazy designs, haven't they? When you look at I mean, the Avoras, and then you're talking about the older ones, which I, all the names escape me currently. Um, <laughs> the one that looks a bit like an Esprit, but is longer and has a stranger boot. Yeah, Evora, Elan, Exige, Elise, um, basically anything with E. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. all, all of these cars generally have been accessible, fun to drive, um, but it was their supercar, and, but hypercar. They're going to something really that's going to be pretty high end in terms of performance yes. and in value um it should be make this kind of bold statement this is what we are this is what oh, we're yeah. capable of. well, well that was the thing no actually I the, the world of people don't know year, about lotus, lotus had a really lotus good stand yeah oh did they so what, what did they have on their stand yeah there? i did see some footage and some pictures on their instagram feed but what, what were they actually doing there i um i honestly can't remember because I've looked at so much, I'm trying to find the digital SR so I can have a quick look through. There were three cars. So whilst you're doing that, the... I am sorry. I'll have a look. <laughs> Hello to those joining us. I am Sarkip says, I don't think... Well, indeed, you know, it's interesting, isn't it, that even for the Supra, when they realized that it would only be right to put a straight six in there, um, they didn't build a straight six. They've gone to, to BMW. BMW. So it's very interesting that. Um, yeah. but, but then BMW straight sixes are gorgeous. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they, they sound amazing as well, don't they? Yeah. So you can't really blame them. Yeah. Can't blame them for doing that. It makes sense. Oh, no, just to but, add yeah, to you, I, I've got a three series um, BMW, a new one next week. Oh, wow. That should be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, all the cars are coming out of, um, I mean, currently, have you seen what Michael's got at the moment today? No, no, I didn't see. 508SW. A 508SW. So what's that actually, a 508SW? The Peugeot. Yeah, no, but what is it? Is it an SUV? So I'm just reading some of these messages. Oh, no, no. Is it an car. SUV or you know it's the, a you... hatchback? No, no, the car. Do you remember the car oh, it's that the came saloon. out? It's the new saloon. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's the, the new really saloon. Really good yeah, looking yes, 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 one. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good looking car. It is. Well, the one complete. that we've got at the moment is white as well. But we've got yeah. the 130 diesel. Last time we had the 508 um, saloon, I think it was, or hatch. I can't right. remember, one of them. And that had the 225 1.6 with the 8-speed EAT. But we've got a slightly more economical one this time. <laughs> No, oh, that's good. I was going to say, you said it was a white car. I was going to say it's Middle East spec. And then you said it was a diesel. I'm like, no, that's not Middle East spec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It would have been a 225, wouldn't it? And white. Uh, it looks very yeah. cool, though. It really does. Yeah, no, it's pretty awesome. So those of us joining us, make sure you check out Planet Auto and all the stuff that they've going on, got going on there on their channel. Right, and you just search for Planet Auto. And they put up a lot of reviews of cars and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool. Um, hoping to get an opportunity to do some more stuff with them as well. And uh, we did a couple of videos yeah, at some recent that. events, which were a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, so do check those as well. And uh, do check out stuff that I'm doing. I've just come back from Camp Jeep. But I'm also, I think just today or tomorrow, depending on uh, when my uh, son gets around to uh, <laughs> I'm going to be putting up a review on the DS7 Crossback. And that'll be going now, up that hopefully today. Now, that is a beautiful today. car. I like that. It's amazing. I was really, I was not familiar at all with the DS brand, so it was really kind of an introduction to me. Um, but the level of detailing that's gone into that car, the level of yes. thought, and the level of um, uh, it's got refinement. Really has refinement, stylish yeah. looks, stylish yeah. premium materials throughout, and yeah. performance engines as well. I mean, it's the same engine out the 508, actually. 
and the GTs. Yeah, all right, right, right. But there's a car that's very much tuned for comfort and luxury and refinement rather than oh, sporty yeah. driving. And I think they've done, yes. they've done well there. But just so much, so much to see. It's one of those cars where there's a real feel-good factor, especially when you get into it, because there's just so much yes. to touch and to see and to see that car. But the, of course, it's party trick is incredible. Well, it's headlines. iconic designing yeah. as well, it's isn't cute. it? Some of the styling of the switch gear is just out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's very, very good. Which, to be honest, I mean, I know it's not a Citroen, it's a DS, but that was something that Citroen used to be famous for. You know, the interiors yeah. of their cars always used to be a, a little bit wacko, wouldn't they? And, and yeah. that's really, really good way. Um, Aza says, if there's another word for reliability, that's Toyota. Good point. He says, BMW cannot even dream. Well, having said that, I owned an E30, and I never really had any major problems with it. Uh, so, no. you know, I'll, I'll just put that out there. And I want to say hello to 18 Danny, and I want to say a really, really big hello and a wave to SSK Drift, who is one of the Drift champions of the Middle East. He's an absolute legend and a superstar. So great to see you. Welcome, Drift. and thank you for joining yes. us. Uh, sorry. And actually, he re that reminds me, because one of the really gutters that I didn't go to, because somebody that I, I, I've, I've met quite a few times, an absolute legend from the Middle East drift world, Adam was there with his new Lexus RC drift car, and he was putting it through his paces, My and word. boy, was he doing a great job of representing a uh, drift scene from the Middle East. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Good to see. So hopefully we'll see. Uh, Samer SSK Drift has also been out to the UK and been. I think was it the Irish Championship you were doing? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think if I remember correctly, you you were doing the Irish Championship. But quite a few of the guys in the Middle East come out here and they do the drift stuff. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I do enjoy watching the uh, the drift cars. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. Aisu says your BMW must have been one in a million. <laughs> yeah, it was, mate, and I miss it. I wish I hadn't sold it. It was a fantastic car. In fact, I was just walking up today and I saw an old E30 325i in the same color as mine but this was a convertible reminiscing going yeah that was a good car they look like wish we had kept our old cars right so what are you going to do you can't keep everything hello to Daisa 57 what are the cars that you wish you hadn't sold Ben Mark 1 Golf GTI Carmen Gear definitely I missed that um and actually, my one. That again. I, I just, I just missed that. A Mark One uh, Volkswagen Golf GTI Cabriolet ah, yes. here on the C plate. Ah, oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, that you should have kept because that now. <laughs> but saying that, I've got the Mark Two Sixteen Valva in the garage yeah. in Helios Blue on the 1991 plate with an Alpha 145 clover, clover leaf sat next to it. You know what? We should take those cars out. We should yeah, do I know. Well, with them. The, the problem with the Golf is the engine's in front of it rather than in it. Yeah, that's, yeah that kind of ruins the plan a bit. Yeah, kind of, that's sort of yeah, used to does, be in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm currently doing. I, I need to change the pulley at the top, but because... Planet Auto has grown at such a crazy rate. I mean, I was looking before, and we celebrated 1 million minutes watched eight months ago. Wow, today congratulations I checked, to you guys. Yeah, well, today I checked, and it's 3.5 million minutes watched. Whoa, well yeah. done. Kudos, absolutely. round of applause. That's, that's like over 2 million in eight months. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. That's fantastic. Well done. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant Thank work. You. Yeah. No, really, really good. And again, well, for those of, those of you watching, we're hoping to do some more collaboration stuff together as well as at the very next opportunity, whenever that might be. And uh, hope well, you that's the thing about the auto car, things, isn't it? Because... You knew about your Jeep thing, but you can't tell us because it's a Jeep embargo thing, and we can't tell you, and so on. Yeah. So we have to meet up when there's actually something. Yeah. Oh, dear. Sound gone. 